and welcome to Wheels Up. I'm your host, Sierra. Today, we will learn all about festivals around the world. Brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and our friends at American Airlines. After our adventure, please join us as we do a very special craft with a very special person. And last, but certainly not least, we will wrap things up with a really fun game of trivia. Are you ready? Let's go on our adventure. Buckle your seatbelts. Here to kick us off is a very special representative from our friends at American Airlines. Welcome passengers. I'm American Airlines flight attendant Delaney Bailey. Welcome aboard our very special flight today with service from the Sunrise Association and American Airlines to several awesome destinations. Today we will be celebrating with people all around the world at their fun and exciting festivals. Our first destination is Harbin, China. So buckle up, sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Whether it's with fireworks or confetti, people everywhere love to party. And with so much to celebrate, there's always a fiesta happening someplace. So get ready to get rowdy, because today we're going to race time on a trip not only around the globe, but around the calendar. Let's hop on board our American Airlines flight and start our one-of-a-kind tour of festivals around the world. Here we go! Our celebrations start in Harbin, China, where the Ice and Snow Festival kicks off each winter. And dare I say, this festival is pretty cool. The winter weather might be chilly, but that doesn't stop millions from venturing outside for skiing, skating, and admiring the largest ice sculptures in the world. Have you ever built anything out of snow? Here, you will find local sculptors working day and night leading up to this festival, shaping blocks of ice into full-size buildings. Of course, these frozen masterpieces won't last forever, but that just makes each year at the Ice and Snow Festival that much more special. What a show! We better get going though. We've got a flight to catch to India for the Festival of Colors, AKA Holi. Fun fact number one, this March holiday celebrates the triumph of good over evil in the Hindu faith. People gather to sing, dance, play music, and eat traditional sweets. But what really makes Holi special is color. All across the country, people toss brightly colored powders on one another. The result is a truly eye-opening experience with people themselves becoming a living piece of art as they welcome the spring. Love fests are lovely, but I think it's time for something more competitive. Time to fly on over to Scotland for the Highland Games. What sort of games do Scots play during this festival? Well, just about everything. There are heavyweight contests like hammer throwing, field events like cycling, and what's that? Bagpipes? That's right! Since they began in the 11th century, the Highland Games have evolved to test not only competitors' string, but also creative skills like music and dance. That's because this festival was originally held to entertain royalty, so competitors are expected to put on a show. Fun fact number two, the Highland Games' most iconic event is the caber toss, where competitors toss wood poles as tall as 20 feet. How neat is that? Now that June's rolled around, it's time we stopped back in the United States. As the most diverse nation in the world, the United States has more celebrations than possibly any other country. And those celebrations go on all year round. In the streets of New York, you will find marchers dressed in traditional colors of blue and white on Israeli American Day. While in San Francisco, Chinatown lights up with beautiful lanterns during Chinese New Year. The Chicago River is dyed green every year to celebrate Irish Americans on St. Patrick's Day, and Carnival Miami is filled with the fashion, food, and music of Latin Americans. Across the nation, Indigenous Peoples Day recognizes the Native Americans who lived here long before Europeans came to this continent, while Black History Month celebrates the culture and struggles of African Americans. Turning back to the month of June, we find Pride Month, perhaps the most colorful celebration of all, 
filled with rainbow-themed parades that were begun by gay Americans celebrating the many unique ways in which people identify themselves. But perhaps the most distinctive American holiday takes place just a few days later, on Independence Day, when we put our differences aside and come together as one American family. From backyard barbecues to fireworks lighting up the evening sky, Independence Day is as American as, well, apple pie. It's also my favorite holiday. All right, everyone, things are about to get messy because up next, we're flying to Boryong, South Korea for Mudfest. Each July, the sleepy town is transformed into party central as thousands of merrymakers fly in with one goal in mind, good messy fun. Originally intended to showcase nearby mud flats, this festival got messy fast, and today's events include mud sliding, mud swimming, mud pits, mud fountains, mud obstacle courses, and even inflatable playgrounds covered in, you guessed it, mud. Mudfest is sure to have you looking like a swamp thing by the end of the day. Time to wash off before our next plane ride. We are headed to Venice, Italy for the Regatta Storica. It's early autumn and visitors line the banks of the Grand. They're about to be transported back in time. Suddenly, dozens of 16th century boats arrive, flying beautiful banners high in the breeze as costume gondoliers, or people who propel and steer Italian boats called gondolas, recreate Italy's glorious past. Following the historical parade, Venetians cheer on a series of boat races. Rowers from around the world arrive, guiding ships in a neck and neck sprint through the city canals. Showcasing the best of the past and present, the Regatta Storica is unlike any other event on earth. Let's head to one of the most beautiful festivals around, Albuquerque's International Balloon Fiesta. For nine October days, the skies over Albuquerque, New Mexico fill with color as hundreds of hot air balloons take flight. Each morning kicks off when hundreds of balloons lift off for visitors to admire. And be sure to catch the special shaped rodeo where strangely shaped balloons are launched. What sort of strange shapes are we talking about? Fun fact number three, past participants have included bees, unicorns, and even a giant Darth Vader. Tremble before the power of the balloon sun. Mwahaha. After a full day of flying, balloons land, but stay lit up for a special glodio where visitors can admire their colors all night. Wow! Time to trade in our balloon for another plane. We're headed back across the world to Thailand. Why fly all the way back to Asia? I've got one word for you. Monkeys! You heard me. Every November, the temples of Lop Bari, Thailand are overrun with primates as people celebrate the Monkey Buffet Festival. The buffet kicks off with an opening ceremony featuring performers dressed in monkey costumes. But it isn't long at all until the real deal arrives. Troops of long-tailed macaques. As macaques swing in, hosts tear sheets off of long banquet tables, revealing vibrant spreads of fruits and vegetables. What follows is quite a bit of monkey business. Macaques jumping across tables, climbing pyramids of pineapples, and starting food fights. Don't worry, there's food for human visitors too, but priority is given to macaques because, fun fact number four, the monkey buffet is held to thank the macaques for bringing good fortune. What lucky monkeys! It's finally winter again. Forget about the cold weather though, our final flight takes us to the tropical Bahamas, just in time for Junkanoo. From colorful costumes to elaborate dance routines, participants spend the entire year preparing for this epic street parade. At its heart though, Junkanoo is all about teamwork. To participate, performers join teams where up to 1,000 people work together on everything from costume design to choreography. Their efforts all pay off when the parade takes to the streets and crowds go crazy for this amazing performance. Junkanoo is not only an incredible festival, but a perfect reminder that it's teamwork that makes the dream work. It's time to pack up our costumes and board our flight back home. See you all next time, explorers! Wow, that was so much fun and amazing! Time to get back on board our flight. Our next stop is crafting. Let's go! Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm 
so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about festivals around the world. So today we are going to make a boat craft from the festival in Italy called Brigada Storica and another craft from the Thailand Monkey Festival. I hope you have fun! Festivals around the world. Project 1, Regatta Storica. Boat craft, construction paper, two colors, scissors, markers, crayons, or colored pencils, glue, optional, glitter glue, and stickers. Project 2, Thailand Monkey Festival craft. Construction paper, one dark brown piece, one light brown piece, scissors, markers, crayons, or colored pencils, and glue. The first craft we are going to make is a boat from the Regatta Storica Festival in Italy. So I have two different colored pieces of paper, but you can use whatever colors you want. I'm using red for my boat and yellow for the oars. And first, for the boat, I'm going to cut out a shape, a boat shape kind of, and it's going to be like this. So it's gonna be round at the bottom, and then at the ends, towards the top, it's going to be pointy. So it's gonna go down like this, and then straight across. And then back up. like this. And this boat kind of resembles a gondola, which they have in Venice, but they have all different kinds of boats in the regatta. So next, we are going to make the oars for the boat. So I'm gonna take my yellow paper and fold it in half so that I get both of the oars at the same time. And I'm going to make sure to cut on the open side of the paper, not the folded side. And I'm going to start and I'm going to kind of make like a rounded shape at the bottom like this and it's going to be thicker than the top. So it's gonna start like this and then I'm gonna go straight across and you want the oars to be really, really long. just like this. So now I have both of the oars and I'm going to glue them onto the boat and they are going to kind of cross each other like when you're paddling the boat, they kind of go across, of each, across each other. So I'm gonna glue the first one. So I'm going to glue the first one on like this across and I want it to come off the boat a little bit so that it looks more 3D. And then the next one, I'm going to glue right across it, kind of like an X shape. Just like this. And now I'm going to add, I have some glitter glue and it's gold. I'm going to add that for some decoration. So you can use glitter glue if you have, you can use markers or crayons, or you can paint it, whatever you want to make it look more festive and fun. But I have some glitter glue and I thought that it would look really pretty on here. So I'm adding some decoration. And this is how my decoration looks. And next I'm going to add some writing. So I'm just gonna write Italy because that's where this festival is. And then I'm going to write Regatta Storica, which is the name of the festival. And so this is my finished boat. And so I added some glitter glue to decorate, but you can add whatever you want. You can add some stickers or draw something or whatever else you want to make it really fun and festive.
The next craft we are going to make is a monkey from the Thailand Monkey Festival. So I have some different colored pieces of paper. I'm using this purple paper for my background, but you can use any color you want. And then I'm using brown for the monkey and some white for other parts of the monkey. And then I'm also going to make some bananas, so I'm using some yellow paper for that. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the monkey's face. So I'm going to use the light brown paper. And this is going to be my background. And I'm going to cut a big circle for the monkey's face. And you want to make sure that it going to fit on your paper, but that it's also pretty big. So I think that that's good. And now I'm going to glue it on. And then next I'm going to make the monkey's ears. So, I'm going to take the light brown paper again and I'm going to fold it in half so that I get both of the monkey's ears at the same time. And make sure to cut on the open side of the paper, not the folded side. And I'm going to cut a big ear shape. Like this. And so these are going to get glued on the top of the monkey's head. And then next, I'm going to cut out a smaller piece of white paper to go on the inside of the ears. So I'm going to fold the paper in half and cut the same sort of shape but a little bit smaller. Like this. Okay, and now next I'm going to cut out the other part of the monkey's face. So I'm going to cut out kind of like a heart shape. So I'm going to cut that out with my white paper. And this is going to be the monkey's eyes. like this. And I'm going to glue that onto the bottom of the face like this. And then next I'm going to cut out the monkey's mouth. So I'm going to cut out a big oval shape and you want it to be big enough so that it can go over this part, all over the monkey's face to cover it. Okay, so now I'm going to glue the mouth onto the face. right here. So now it looks like this. And the first thing I'm going to add to make it look more like a monkey is going to be the eyes. So I'm going to make my monkey's eyes blue. And so I'm going to add a circle where the bumps are kind of like from the heart like this, 
and then I'm gonna color them in. So these are gonna be the monkey's eyes. And I chose to make them blue, but you can also make them brown or black. Okay. So now I have the eyes, and next I'm going to make the monkey's mouth and nose. So the nose is going to go right at the top of this oval shape. And I'm going to just draw two little dots like that. And then the smile is going to go all the way from one side to the other. Like this. So now I have my monkey finished, but I think it needs some bananas to eat. So I'm going to cut out some bananas out of my yellow paper. So I'm gonna fold my paper in half. I want two bananas, but you can make as many as you want. And I'm going to cut a shape, kind of like, almost like a moon shape. And it's going to be pointed at the top. Like this. So I'm just gonna glue them on the sides of my monkey so that it has something to eat. And then I'm just going to draw with a brown marker. I'm going to draw at the top of the banana the little brown part. Just like this. So this is my finished monkey, and this is how I made it with the bananas, which you don't have to add, but I wanted to add. And you can also make, maybe you can make your monkey look like it's in a tree or something else, and you can also add as much decoration as you want. I hope you had fun making this boat craft from the festival in Italy and this monkey craft from the Thailand Monkey Festival. I'll see you next time, bye! Wow, we had so much fun crafting with you. We are coming in for a landing to our final destination, an exciting trivia game. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. There will be four answers, but only one will be correct. Can you guess the right one? Well, come on, let's play. Welcome to Wheels Up Trivia with Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. Question number one. The Harbin Ice and Snow Festival takes place in which country? A, China, B, Antarctica, C, Norway, or D, Nebraska. If you guessed China, you were correct. Question number two. The Festival of Holi welcomes which season? A, winter, B, spring, C, summer, or D, fall. Ooh, do you remember? Spring. Question number three. All of the following competitions take place during the Highland Games except A, cycling, B, hammer throwing, C, haggis tossing, or D, hockey. Well, all of those sound fun, but hockey doesn't really happen in the Highland Games. Question number four. During the Highland Games, a caber refers to A, a glass ball, B, an iron cube. C, a wooden pole. Or D, a golden ticket. Caper, 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 caper. It's a wooden pole. Great job. Question number five. You can do all of the following at Boryung Mudfest except A, 
mud wrestling, B, mud swimming, C, mud eating, or D, mud massages. Hmm. I don't really want to eat mud. I don't know about you. Question number six. During the Regata Storica, participants race through the city in A. Gondolas B. Race cars C. Speedboats or D. Batmobiles Well, I think we can rule out one of these. And gondolas is the correct answer. Question number seven. The International Balloon Fiesta fills the sky each year in this city. A. Albuquerque B. Alkazam C. Albuquerque or D. Owl Turkey <laughs> How funny! Albuquerque is the correct answer. Question number eight. Thailand's Monkey Buffet Festival thanks the monkey for A. Making it rain B. Bringing good fortune C. Being so darn cute or D. Their support during the Great Banana Wars Bringing good fortune. Great job! Question number nine. Where is the colorful festival of Junkanoo celebrated? A. Bermuda B. Bahamas C. Key Largo or D. Kokomo Oh, all of these sound wonderful! And Junkanoo takes place in the Bahamas! And now to our final question, number 10. Festivals are giant multi-day parties that happen A. During the summer B. During the winter C. During Shark Week or D. All year round Thank goodness they happen all year round because they are so fun! Thank you so much for playing trivia with me today for Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. See you next time. Yay! You did such a great job with games trivia. Thank you so much for tuning in on today's episode of Wheels Up. I had such a blast going on that adventure, crafting, and playing that fun game of trivia with you. You can tune into more Wheels Up episodes on our Sunrise Studios app. Downloadable on your mobile phones, iOS and Android, also your Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We can't wait to see you on our next flight with Wheels Up, brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and our friends at American Airlines. Bye!